This is Nate. Nate became a Christ follower two weeks ago and is still a bit giddy about it. Now he's trying not to do cartwheels in public. Nate became a believer partly because of... Kim. Yet oddly enough, Kim and Nate have never met. How is this possible? Well, let's take a look. Kim loved Jesus from an early age, and in college she had a huge impact on her friends. While most of her peers used their college years to, well, experiment, Kim didn't. She remained committed to her faith, and it showed. It especially showed to Lisa, her roommate, who confessed to Kim that she wanted whatever it was that made Kim so strong. Kim shared her faith with Lisa, and Lisa believed. Years later, at Lisa's first real job, she met Thomas. Thomas was hit by a drunk driver when he was 13 and still carried a lot of anger and bitterness. Thomas and Lisa became friends, and it wasn't long before he started going to church with Lisa and her husband. After a lot of studying and searching, Thomas gave his life to Christ. Fast forward a few years. Thomas became a public speaker and was often asked to speak at large events. See, when he became a believer, Thomas developed a new perspective on life. He stopped resenting what had been taken from him and started being thankful for the second chance he had been given. On one particular day, Thomas shared about overcoming hardship and what it means to choose joy. He was so passionate that a number of people were inspired to share a link to his video. The video of Thomas inspired James, too. And if anyone needed inspiration, it was him. James had a ton of issues. He spent most of his life as a passive husband, an absent father, and a horrible friend. That said, no one disliked him more than he disliked himself. But everything changed the night he happened to watch Thomas online. Something clicked and he knew what he had to do. He surrendered his miserable life to someone greater, and he was forever changed. James fought hard to make up for the lost years with his family. And he also began working with young men who were in danger of throwing their lives away. One of those men was Nate. Nate didn't really know his own dad, and he had no real direction in life, ultimately bouncing from one bad decision to another. Because of that, he often found himself in trouble with the law. No one had ever showed him what it looked like to be a real man. That is, until he met James. James became the first father figure Nate ever had. He learned about honesty, self-control, humility, and integrity, and where those traits come from. Two months later, Nate publicly declared his belief in Christ. And of course, James was there. Now you can see the connection. Nate was impacted by James, who was influenced by Thomas. Thomas saw an uncommon joy in Lisa, who learned of Jesus from Kim. Kim's relationship with God eventually led to Nate's. Funny how these two people have never met and never will. Do we just need a reminder of how God works? Do we need a, a reminder of how He operates? I'm sure you found yourself in that story somewhere, right? I'm sure you found yourself in a place where he got you. Because that's what God does. He just gets you. I'm so thankful in this Rooted series that w as we come toward the end of it, we've got two more weeks, but, but this week is really about launch. It's about, you know, the release party. It's about... You know, it's about as you have, you know, deepened your roots into Christ and into His Word, and, and you start believing what He has said about you, and you start trusting the identity that you have in Christ. And you start believing as you see your life lived out in faith, as you trust Him. You know, trust Him with all things. Your whole life, your, your possessions, uh, you know, it just totally turns everything upside down. And it's to a point where, if all of you know, because we're all, you know, agriculturists at some point, I'm sure, you, you know, whether it was in elementary class when you tried a bean or, or you know, you are in, uh, boy, it, it would have been great if that was coffee beans back in the day. I was just thinking, not a lima bean, you know, something useful. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you planted. And you saw that flower boom. And then from that bloom came what? Fruit. 
but not just one. It's it it, it just like multiply. You know, uh, peppers. You know, I, we did peppers this year, and our pepper plant just went crazy. You just pop, 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 pop all over the place. Right now, tomatoes are going crazy. Right now, have been in our backyard, and and so when I when I start seeing these things in nature. I know that when we're rooted in Christ, the fruit that comes from us is we become like Christ. The fruit starts producing in others. And that's what today is about. That is what this week in Rooted is about. I know some of you that are joining online, you can follow us, uh, you know, our Rooted series. I want to encourage everyone. Uh, I know we have some folks that are just back in the town or, you know, new today. We have our Rooted guides that are out there. Uh, go through that. It's a personal study. It's a personal investment into who we are in Christ and we're rooted in Christ. And today is about getting the word out, telling your story um, and the power of story. I'm sure you saw that in the, uh, let me see what I'm going to do. I'm having a Kyle moment right now. <laughs> I need my, I need my whiteboard. If you guys ever have a meeting with, with uh, Kyle, he always needs the whiteboard. And the whiteboard is a great storyteller, right? <laughs> and, um, and so we're going to tell, tell a story about church here at Dade City Christian Church. So we'll just put where we're meeting right now. It's called a building, Dade City Christian Church building. It's right here, right? Kind of, uh, let's see. Let's just kind of do a diagonal line like that, a diagonal line like that. So we got some quadrants here, okay? So here's, here's our church. Here's a building. Here's where we are right today. We're here on Sunday, right? Sunday, we're gathered here together. All of us are together. And uh, let me just turn this so in case those online can see it pretty well. But I'm, uh, we're not just the church. It's each person, right? Strangers was a great video to show us, right? So, so Steve, I'm just going to pick on you. You're, you're out here in, in this quadrant, right? Right? You're kind of Zephyr Hills? We'll put a Z here, right? We got Z, D, and we'll just put San Ann and, and the inmost earth, right? It's all that way. <laughs> And then we got, uh, you know, Richland down here. So, uh, All right, so, so you're over in this area. So you're, you're going to leave today uh, from this church. You're going to go probably someplace to eat, right? You're going to be over in this quadrant probably, more than likely, right? Maybe? You might cross over here, okay. So, so, so you, may, you may come to this point. Uh, today you've got some things I'm sure planned out. I'm just going to use blue for today, okay? So I'm sure you've got things planned out for, for, for the day. Uh, from, so after you're eating, you're going home? You got another stop? Is it in this quadrant? Oh, okay. So we'll just keep it over here, okay? Do you ever move back to your quadrant? So A little bit later? Sleep there, okay. So after that, you don't have to go into details, but you're going to go back to this quadrant. When do you make the change? About 1 o'clock. About 1 o'clock, okay. So after this point, you're going to go there? We're going to see how this works, okay. So he's coming back here. At, then you live here, and then you're coming back out? Go back to D? Around 5, okay. And then from there, after 5? Back to Z, okay. And then back home? Okay, then back home, okay. You do anything before you go? Do you walk around your neighborhood or anything like that? Maybe. Okay. All right. All right. We're just going to use that as a day, okay? So when he leaves here, the church leaves here, right? Steve's a church. He leaves. He goes to Dade City. He's in Zephyr Hills. He's here. All this is his area of influence as a church. All of us, if we, if what I really wanted to do, honestly, uh, I, was, I was wanting to have us all just have a, uh, an art project today to kind of draw out where we are uh, here in the building, because we have to start getting a sense of that when we meet together, we meet together for worship and, and, and uh, equipping and encouragement, but the church doesn't just stay at the building. It leaves. It goes out. There's a reason it goes out. Uh, Jesus told us in, in Matthew chapter 5. Let's go there. We're going to read this, this great scripture. 
Matthew chapter 5, 15 through 19. Thank you, Steve. I can trust Steve because he's in my life group. And he'll just get me later if he felt uncomfortable. All right, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You, my followers, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp or put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to who? Everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And so Jesus never talked about just coming together and being a, a clump of, of people. He talked about being something salt that is thrown and used in many different ways. You know what salt's used for. And light, you know. And, and I wanted to share what uh, Eugene Peterson wrote in his translation in the message. He says, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of the earth. So you're here, Right. Here's Steve. He is, he, is, he is taking what Christ has done in his life. He has been rooted in Christ. He identifies with Christ. He is not just about Dade City Christian Church. He is a salt that is going into D, the D zone and back into the Z zone, and he's going different places. So just think about your life right now, where you're leaving from today, right? After you, you we have uh, worship and we have uh, adult Bible study. Maybe you're visiting Big Red, and then you're heading out. And every place you go, Jesus says, you, I am with you, right? I am with you. You are, you are my representative. You are there to, you know, think about salt, preserve, to, to, to flavor, you know, to, to bring life to, right? There's nothing like, you know, think about it, a, a, a baked potato with no salt, bleh, right? A little bit of salt, and it changes things, right? And so, so he, Jesus is saying, listen, this is what you are. You are to go out and, and to, to preserve and save, and you're out there to, to, to bring uh, seasoning and, and light. And he says, but if you lose your saltiness, how will pay, people ever taste the godliness? When you lost your usefulness, you'll just end up in the, gar in the garbage, Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. Do you believe that? That is why love, serve, make disciples, right? It's not about keeping it to ourselves. God's not a secret. He's done something in our life. And, we're, and, and so Peterson goes on to say, so we're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill, if I make you light bearers, you don't think you're going to hide under a bucket, do you? No, I'm putting you on the light stand. Now I am putting you on the hilltop and on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others and you'll prompt people to open up to God. That's one of the focuses I want us today to focus in on as we're being rooted. As we open up to others, we open other people up to God, right? When we tell our story, we're opening people up to the life that is in us. And so we must tell our story. And we have been strategically placed. So here's what I want you to do. Here's my first challenge for you. Yeah, it's a Kyle challenge. My ch I want you to pull out a piece of paper. Uh, when you get home today, if you're at home early and want to get started today, or do it tomorrow, write, get colored pencils, and, and, and then start with your, where do I go? What is my qu quadrant? Where, where is God leading me through the week? Sunday, here's where Steve's going. I'm sure if we had a different color, he's, he's in a different quadrant, right? You're going different places on Monday that you didn't go on Sunday. And everywhere he is going, I want you to trace each day where you are going because that is where God is strategically placing you to be salt and light. There's a reason that you go to that same Publix every week. There's a reason. You all, all gather down there at Sunrise uh, Cafe. There's a reason, you know, that you go to school, you know, drop off kids. There's a reason you're, you're at. And, and so I want you to see strategically where God is placing you. 
because it's important for us to realize that we're salt and we're light. So that when we tell our story, we open the people that are in these places, we open them up to who God is and what he has done for us. All of us love stories. There's power in stories. Stories inspire us. They call us into something greater. Uh, you know, stories are uh, um, retellable, right? I'm sure even what you did yet, the, the, the beach trip, right? Suddenly Kyle's telling you a story about the beach trip. I bet if you talked to each youth member and each parent that went, you would get a story about that. that um, uh, let me get out here so the camera can see me. But they're retellable. They increase our capacity for empathy. You know, as, as, as you start hearing, oh, yeah, did, did you not, when Kyle was telling you about his beach trip, did you not take a moment just to think about when you were at the beach? Did you not take a moment to think about when you breathe in that salty air? Right? It opens us up to empathy, to sharing in the story. And stories teach us through the success and failures of the characters involved. And I think so many times we don't want to share our stories because it involves failure. But did we not learn in the communion meditation that Peter, through his story, that story of failure brought him to do what? I'm not a fisherman anymore. I'm an apostle to leave out of here changed. And so what do you believe about the story that God has written in you? The Bible uses stories. It's filled with a series of biographies and stories of people who have both succeeded and failed in their relationship with God. And let me tell you, one of my favorites is Jacob. I, I started, you know, when I go back to and read through the Old Testament, and I see the God of Jacob in, in, uh, in the Psalms. I realized that Jacob was such a knucklehead. He was just, you know, just... He, he, he didn't always do things the right way, right? He lied on occasion. He, he, put, he put other, you know, he, he put himself first in many occasions. But we still pray to the God of Jacob. We still pray to the God of Ron. We still pray to the God of Joy and Steve and all of you that have stories today because the Bible says that we are here to, to uh, you know, uh, Jesus... Uh, Man, just think about his stories, his uses of parables. God's story of his love for man. So what is a story? Let's write these down. I know this wasn't in your notes, but if you want to write it down. Here's your part of the story. A character. Yeah, I see some characters out here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know, the subject. The crisis. The series of challenges that a character faces. Right? I'm sure you walk through your, just your, let's just talk about faith stories today because we are at church. I'm sure in your faith walk there have been many challenges, right? Things that you went through in your life. Things, times when you doubted. Times when things happened to you that you just, you know, God, why are you doing this to me? Right? And then there's a crossing point. I like that because the cross is a crossing point, isn't it? When you gave your life to Christ, think about that crossing point. You know, think of that young man as he's running away from the cops, but then as Jesus entered into his life, he was no longer running from the cops. He was running to what? Shine, you know, to be salt and light. And so that crossing point is a climax of the story where an event or a choice brings you out of crisis. It changes you, and the change is the final part of the story. It's a new outcome, a new perspective. Let me ask you, because we're pretty much all Christians here for service. Has your life changed since you first gave your life to Christ? Has there been, been a change in you? Do you see things differently do you go about your day differently because God is in your life and Christ is your Savior and the Holy Spirit is in you, right? You guys can talk a little bit. Thank you. So every story needs a what? 
an audience, right? My wife's a gifted storyteller. Her stories are great, but they're even better when they're told among a group, right? When they're shared across the table. When they're shared in a small group or a large event. Because cho- that story becomes salt and light. And it changes things. So who comes to mind? We're going to stop for a minute. Who comes to mind in your quadrant, in your, uh, you know, what you have going on today? The, the people that come into your life. Who is your storytelling club, right? Who are the people that you come in contact with? Write them down. Think about them. God has intentionally placed you in places to tell your story. And we're going to learn this week in Rooted that we first start with God's story. Because it all begins with Him, right? God created us. He made us in His image. Psalm 139, if you haven't, if that, if that, if you haven't gone to that psalm yet. We've shared it a few times in the Rooted series. Go back to Psalm 139. Before we arrived, before we were in our mother's womb, before we were born and created, we were already in the mind of God. And He created each one of us. That's part of His first story. We were created in His image. We were created and made for God. And, and, and so God our Father created us to love us. He breathed in his breath of life. But you know the story. What happened next? Well, we decided we'd be better off without God, didn't we? And sin entered the world and it brought death. For all of sin fallen short of the glory of God is what Romans 3.23 says, right? Sin uh, is disobedience to God. Sin is when we don't even show love for God or acknowledge God because we fail to meet up with the fact that we were created by Him and to love Him. So we're telling God's story. It always begins with God. And then it comes to us and what we did when we know God. Yeah, we know God, but we rejected God. Sin entered the world. And through sin... We have death. Now, you're going to go deeper into this this week in your Rooted series. So I'm just kind of giving you the Reader's Digest version, if they still have Reader's Digest. Shortened version. And so we were separated from God. Death is separation from God. It's not when you expire. So what were we going to do with ourselves now, right? Right? We've left God, we, we rejected God, we, uh, we've separated from God. What are we going to do for ourselves? Absolutely what? Nothing, right? How, have you, how many of you have tried that attempt to be as good as good can be? Failed, right? Every time. <laughs> how many of you have tried to, you know, maybe, maybe uh, uh, looked at a way of trying to uh, approach God through all the good things you can do? You know you're going to fail, be- and so God enters the story again, but he enters into our story as Jesus, the Son. Why do we get excited about Christmas? No, it's not the presence. It's the gift of God that came, right? God entered this world as Jesus, the Son, and he came to give us life. And so when Jesus offered his life on the cross, he rescued us and brought us into a new life with God. And so Jesus is God's son who died for our sins to bring us back in that relationship with God. He is the one and only son. Now we all know, or should know, John 3, 16, right? For God so, what? Loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through his son, that it would be what? Saved, right? That's the crossing point, right? The crossing point was the cross. The power of sin was de- defeated, and our lives changed, right? I know all of you in here 
had the moment that you decided that the cross was a defining point for your life. You wanted eternal life. You wanted a changed life. You wanted a life that belongs to God. And you came and you came and you gave your life to him. And so we tell a story when we come and give our lives to him, right? We're buried with him. Our sins are forgiven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> past, present, and future. Now, I don't keep you down there that long, so just down here. <laughs> buried with him and raised in newness of life. And when we're buried in Christ, our sins are forgiven, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, now lives in you. Amen? I hope this is an old hat because the story lives on. And the new life is where Jesus becomes Lord and the old life is gone, and a new life has come. And the Holy Spirit leads us to become like Jesus. I want to, uh, let's, let's look at this 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, uh, verses 17 through 20. Let's read this together. It's a great verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. You're not the same as you always were. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. God in you. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us this ministry of reconciliation, bringing us back to God. Verse 19, that is, in Christ, God was re reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses or their sins against them, and entrusting to us now the what? Message of reconciliation. The story now belongs to who? us because we have been saved we have been rescued we have been redeemed we have been changed and now the message comes from us to others and we become therefore we're ambassadors for christ god makes his appeal through us we implore you on the behalf of christ be reconciled to god so that when you're out here among your quadrants you are telling the story of redemption in your life because your life has been changed because of Christ. Right? God's story is in each one of you. Do you believe that this, this morning? And so, your story. What would you tell? What would you tell the person next to you about your story? Would you tell your... Uh, uh, your life before you met Christ? Yes, right? Some of the great focuses we have that we're going to look at. The Apostle Paul, right? The, the, the murderer of Christians. The, the worst of sinners, he called himself. He always, in every testimony, this was my life before Christ. And then I came to meet Christ. And what a difference it made because now from this point on, this is why I am who I am. And I will not stop till all of you know Jesus. I will do anything in my life to see you know Christ. So what is your life before Christ? What is your life when you gave your life to Christ, that matters, right? And you know what? I know we have a pretty older group in here. I'm talking about myself. Right? <laughs> One of the great mentors of my, um, in my life shared this with me. He says, you know, we have our conversion where we, where we gave our life to Christ. <coughs> We're baptized into him. But it, there seems in our life we have multiple conversions. It's like we understand fully that our life is hidden in Christ. And maybe some of those times in your life when it finally dawned on you to give up everything and follow him, right? Maybe in this rooted series, there came a point where you, things change. You, you, con, you know, made a co conversion, if you will, right? God, I haven't been walking this way, but now all of a sudden I'm walking this way. Ha, this, is, this is the difference that Jesus makes in our life. And so now, folks, I'm done preaching and being a cheerleader. I hate doing that. That's one of the worst jobs of a, a preacher is to try to motivate the troops. You know why? 
Because each one of us has the Holy Spirit in us. There's no greater motivation than that. And it's time to tell your story. It's time to take it to the places you go. And this week in Rooted, this week in Rooted, you're going to tell your story. I was talking to someone earlier today. They have two words to help them tell their story, donkey and donkey. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I have a feeling that before Christ, there was a, someone was a donkey. And then after Christ, someone was a donkey, but in a different way, right? Because he changes us. This week in your life, in your rooted life, the Holy Spirit's not going to let you go. Because Jesus says either you're salt that's useful or salt to be thrown away. You're either a light or you're burying the light that I have placed in your life. And you have a story to tell. And you know where it's told? Yes, at the golf course. Yes, at the, you know, the, the pub. It's at the lunch line. It's at Publix. It's at you know, your, your card game. It's, it's at when you walk around your neighborhood and you ran into that person that every day you run into that person with the dogs. Yesterday we went yard selling. We ran into folks from our church and we also ran into folks that we hadn't seen in a while. You just tell them your story, right? This is what I've been doing. You know, I didn't know you were an artist. I had a young man, Skyler and Zach, they're good friends with him. And he's just been, I said, you're, you're showing his art. I was like, it's just beautiful, you know? And so who are you going to share your story with? If you have problems with that, here's what you're going to do. Pray. One of the greatest prayers, you can look at each, each apostle. Pray for opportunities. Pray that the door may be open. Pray that, 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 God, you would give me someone to share my story with. Is that your prayer today? Lord, who is it that you want me to speak your story? In me. And pray for boldness. He will give it to you. Pray for boldness. Yeah, you're with that little lady with the three dogs that you see every day. And you move on from, oh, isn't that a cute little puppy? To, so how's your life doing? How have things been going? Let me tell you what's been happening in my life. Here's what God has done for me. Tell your story.